most case solution is uh, very simple because it appears to be consistent to put additional terms equal zero. So we just obtain usual commutation relation between derivative and coordinate. And also we can take the derivatives from u. Uh, this relation is also true. One can check that this relation is consistent with the commutator of derivative and coordinate, also by commuting derivatives to the further right. One more thing that we need is Leibniz rule for this derivative. That is what kind of how do we apply the room product of two functions? And that one calculates simply because one knows how the derivative acts on coordinate. And it is not also surprised that by this rule, it's just the line rule for the usual derivative. So this kind of line is rule one can call classical or trivial or undeformed values or all this uh, as synonyms probably. Uh, one can speak about half algebra of derivatives, but that's more mathematical and I will just keep it more or less just a line rule can be uh, <coughs> expressed more generally in terms of commultiplication. Uh, the difference is that commultiplication is representation independent object by line rule depends on what you apply operator. So commultiplication has more information, but I suppose that in talk from Paolo you will hear more about mathematical structure, half algebras and so on. So I will uh, for this talk I will not need it that much. Okay. Uh, now what we want, so <coughs> up to this point we were in the abstract algebra, so everything was uh, in terms of abstract coordinates and derivatives, and uh, now the idea is to have a theory which can give some uh, results that can be potentially experimentally measured. So in, in order to have this, I would like to express everything in terms of uh, commutative variables, so everything in terms of variables of commutative coordinates, but you know, some sense keep track of deformation that I have. So one can do that using quantitative <coughs> theorem, and I will not go into details here because I don't have time in principle. Using this one knows how to map functions of non-commutative coordinates to functions of commutative coordinates. And also one knows how to map abstract multiplication from the algebra to so-called star product of two functions. In case of our theta deformed space, this star product is well known well my out product given this way, or my line is gone exponentially, it looks like this. Uh, its properties are its associative, but it's of course non-commutative, and uh, if we would start multiply two fun real functions, then the result is not the real function again, but under complex conjugation, something like this happens. That this star product really uh, captures the non-commutativity from the algebra, uh, one can see by just Writing, writing the very trivial example of star commutator between two coordinates. Uh, so it's just the commutator from the abstract algebra only now written in terms of usual coordinates and star product. If, if one takes the usual commutator of two coordinates, it's zero, of course. But if we multiply them with the star, then we obtain the relation from the abstract algebra. So that's one thing that we need in terms of commuting coordinates. The second thing that we need, so we know how to map functions, how to multiply, how to map the abstract multiplication, and we also have to learn how to map the abstract derivative in terms of usual partial derivatives. And then this would be this derivative star here. Uh, the idea how to do it is basically given here. So we start with the abstract function, and we know how to map it to the function of commuting coordinates. On the other hand, we know how the abstract derivative acts on this abstract function, and this is new abstract function, so to say, and we know how to map this abstract function also to space of commuting coordinates, and now the idea is just to read off the, the operator itself. So we have a function, we have the result of operator acting on function, and one just reads off the, the, this derivative star. And in case of theta deformed space, the result is more or less expected to just get the usual partial derivative because we had the uh, usual commutation relation with coordinates and usual average rules of the derivative commute. So uh, our derivative star will be just a partial derivative, and the uh, Leibniz rule will be, of course, the undeformed Leibniz rule for usual partial derivatives. And now, knowing uh, how to multiply functions, how derivatives look like, one can do all sorts of things like doing the field theory, gauge theory. What I'm interested here in is what happens with the uh, Lorentz that is Poincare transformations in this space. And therefore, I will first just rewrite some uh, well known properties of classical Lorentz transformations in order to deform them later on. So, uh, under Lorentz transformation, we have coordinates transforming in this way where omega is anti constant. We can 
introduce the notion of a scalar field that is fielded by Brown's transform, or if one writes the very form variation, that is the difference between transform and non transform field at the same point, one gets this result. And then one can check what happens if we apply two transformations one after the other, or that, cut, that is, calculate the commutator of two Lorentz transformations, they close algebra in this way. So it's a again Lorentz transformation with the parameter which is commutator of two parameters. And what I wrote here is the Leibniz rule is just a well known fact that if we have a product of two scalar fields, it, it transforms like a scalar field again. So this is this line and this line here. Or uh, how does one calculate it? One first transform first field multiplied with the second, and then first multiplied with the transformation of the second field. Now, the idea is to somehow deform this transformation in order to get to see the deformed Lorentz symmetry. So, we start first with just rewriting the element omega x derivative of field phi in terms of star product and star derivatives. So, in, in this element, there's no star product anywhere, and now I want to introduce it by hand. That is, I want to rewrite, uh, want to rewrite this element in terms of some operator x star omega, which I don't know, star, star multiplied with the field phi. Using this relation, one can solve for this equation of the two victory. One uh, expands this operator in terms of in order of thetas and calculate, and what comes out to be the result to all others, thanks uh, to the fact that this is Lorentz symmetry and this is linear in this, is this for x star operator. So it's a second order differential operator. It starts uh, like the, 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 the one that we started from, and then it has one additional term. That is when we write now the transform, uh, transformation law of field phi, and this transformation law of the form. Transform Lorentz transformation of field, it's minus six star phi. It's given by this expression. And I call it deformed, but essentially we would expand this star that is here. We would just get the classical transformation law, because I didn't do anything but just rewrote the classical transformation law in terms of star product. That's the only thing that I did. Uh, of course, if one checks what happens with the algebra, it's the same as as undeformed algebra because the transformations are the same. <coughs> and now the question is why do we call it deformed? And the answer is here. Uh, for classical one Lorentz transformation law, we had that the a usual product of two scalar fields is a scalar field again. Now we want to demand that the star product of two scalar fields is a scalar field again. So this relation here is a demand, so to say. And I would like to rewrite this in terms of, uh, to write it in terms of Leibniz rule. So to say, uh, to apply operator on the first field, star second, and then first star operator on the second field. And if I would just uh, have this line here. So forget about the, this term here. Uh, if one uh, uh, inserts what is the transformation of field and star product, one would not get the, the right hand side here. One has to add some additional terms. Uh, well, that comes out because the star product is non commutative, and it's not just, uh, one cannot just commute this omega x uh, once to phi 1 and once to phi 2. One has to have some additional terms which cancel the contribution from the non commutativity, and therefore we say that we obtain the like rule which is non deformed. So here comes the difference between. Uh, this deformed Lorentz transformations and uh, and classical or deformed transformations. For classical, we had uh, just these first two terms, and now we have something additional to the Leibniz row, where this delta of the row is defined here. Now, uh, uh, one can abstract this result. So, okay, just a moment. Uh, so. <coughs> This Leibniz rule, one can write in terms, or one can, one can actually rewrite this transformation. Since I have it now in terms of star product, the star derivatives, it is not a problem to write it in terms of abstract algebra because I know uh, that star, how to match star product to the abstract algebra and also star derivatives. And that was essentially the idea because I don't know how to map usual product to the abstract algebra. I have to rewrite everything in terms of star product and then map it to the abstract algebra. So from this result, I can write uh, my Lorentz transformation in the abstract algebra, and this is given here, and check if everything is consistent with commutation relation with coordinates, and so on. Write the abstract multiplication, and finally, 
when one adds the um, well, when one adds derivatives, one can speak about theta deformed from correct by algebra or also from algebraic one of the empirical unit. And uh, this result has not been known until I think August last year. It was generally believed that theta deformed space does not possess quantum group symmetry. Yeah. And uh, so this was a the result was also obtained by Chen Chen in his group somewhere I think in August. And also independently in Munich, group by Florian Koch and Tosini Zubinka. And uh, uh, with, with us, it came out as a side result because we were looking essentially at diffeomorphisms, so more general thing. And this is just a special case of diffeomorphisms where parameter is linear in coordinates. So this is on the level of the abstract algebra. And now uh, one can introduce notion of fields. So with scale of fields, we already met, so it's confirmation when it's given us by like this. One can introduce vector, covariant and contravariant, terms of fields in the same way. What is important is that uh, all these transformations are written in terms of x and star products, but they're essentially classical transformations. What is important, the uh, second thing that is important is thanks to the point co product or Lavin's rule, one can say that the star product of two scalar fields is a scalar field again, then those vector field star scalar field transforms like a vector and so on. In general, if I have star product of two tensors, I can say that it transforms like a tensor uh, of appropriate ground again. And that makes it possible to speak about, to construct invariant action. And I just show you as an application, very, very simple example. So we speak about uh, five to the three theory and Lagrangian is given by this. So uh, this is the free part and the writing part. And uh, what is important is, uh, since I have deformed Lagrange's rule, all of these terms transform like scalars. So uh, phi star phi is a scalar again, uh, phi star phi star phi also. And this, uh, I have contraction of uh, covariant and, con and contravariant vector, and then also, uh, well, this is also a scalar, thanks to the formation of coproduct. So this is the transformation law of my Lagrangian. And in order to have now uh, action, one also needs an integral. And we would like to have integral with the cyclic property. That is that under the integral we can make cyclic permutations. Uh, and in theta deformed case this is not a problem since the usual integral in theta deformed case has a cyclic property. Uh, in more general case, uh, uh, cases of deformation, uh, this will not be the case and that, that is one of the, the uh, main problems, so to say, in the other spaces. So for theta, in theta, uh, the form space, we just use the usual integral, it's cyclic, and we write down the action in this form. Now using, uh, uh, thanks to the, since we have Lagrangian, which is a scalar, this action is invariant at the form Lorentz transformations, and one can now calculate equations of motion from here, and also try to calculate those quantities. Equation of motion follows from a relational principle, and here we use the cyclic property because uh, if one would like to vary with uh, respect to function g, for example, then one commutes, permutes it cyclically to the further left or the right of the integral. It depends on the, on the choice, so in here it's further left. Then erase one star because that is also possible thanks to the cyclic property, and then just varies usually, and this is the result for the variation. So using this, one obtains this for the equation of motion from the action of the previous transparency. And uh, what is important is that if one would uh, expand the action of the previous transparency and vary the expanded version classically, one would obtain the same result uh, like this equation only expanded, of course. So that, that, that matches. It's fine. Uh, what we also tried is to calculate conserved quantities. That is, looking, we tried looking at the net nature theorem. And what we found is that uh, energy momentum tensor exists. It's conserved, but it's not symmetric. And that's the problem because then angular momentum constructed from there will not be conserved. And the question is if one can correct that in a way, so to say, add some divergence of anti-symmetric something, or if maybe our approach was not good, maybe one should do something else, maybe we did something wrong. That is, we still don't understand completely what happens with the conservation laws in this sense. So. That was the example, and I finally would like to summarize. So, uh, I tried to show you that there is a, a, a quantum group 
of symmetry for theta deformed space. And it's essentially it's a deformation of the classic tolerance symmetry. The deformation is completely in co algebra sector. So the algebra transformation is not deformed because transformations are classical. What is deformed is largely true, or this co product if you want it more mathematically. And now one can uh, establish uh, tensor calculus, uh, define all sorts of fields, and tensor fields, multiply them, contract indexes, that everything is consistent, and one can write down the invariant actions and analyze what happens there. So equations of motion, conserved quantities that, like I said, is still in progress, so it's not completely clear what happens. And uh, uh, how one proceeds further on, there are two ways essentially. One is, uh, I said before, and you will hear it in Dr. Kahnemeyer, <coughs> instead of uh, looking at Lorentz symmetry, one can use the same method in analyzing deformation. So just invert the star product, so to say, using classic transformation right, in terms of star product, and then look what happens further on. In uh, that way, one, uh, so deforming deformation symmetry, one obtains deformed gravity theory. And about that you will hear on Sunday. Also, uh, the, the the form space will be the same, so theta deformed space. The second way to proceed is to uh, leave out theta deformed space, but to look at more general space, you know, deformed spaces, the Lie algebra deformation or uh, quantum spaces. And uh, it is uh, especially interesting, for example, uh, to look at the spaces that already have quantum group symmetry, like uh, Kapanikovsky space time because there is this couple quantum right? symmetry and the question is if uh, what happens if we now apply this method to calculate deformed symmetry there will these two symmetries coincide or not and we did concerning Kalkovikovsky we did some preliminary analysis and it seems that they don't coincide for the moment and now the idea is to understand what happens there and uh, try to say something more so One would also consider something like Q for uh, t sorry, theta deformed uh, Casimir operators for your theta deformed Lorentz group. Uh, theta deformed Casimir operators, like mass and spin. Uh, no, so invariant. Invariant, yeah. Uh, well, what happens to them? Well, it's not a problem. But essentially, you get invariant by star multiplying the what you say.